What's happening, people? Tommy Scoville, you're on the lifeboat. How are you? Alan, freaking Valentine. There he is. What's happening, brother? Valerie, good to see you. Matrix Rabbit, what's happening? Chick, uh, Cherry Cola. The inappropriate heifer. And you are inappropriate. I'm kidding. Good to have you, Hef. Glad you're here. Uh, Valerie, good to see you. Just me being me. Heather, how are you? Kim is blue. There you are. Hey, Whitney. What's happening? Layla. Got me on my knees. Kristen Melinda, how goes it? Hey, Plant Freak, how are you? Miss Sunrise Dawn, Subi. Chrissy Never and Newton, good to see you. Lord, Kiss Freak, glad you're here. Valerie, I need a card. Mira Dira, Cindy Plumley. Hey, there's Ben. What's happening? Ben Bacon Bits Turner, Pruy, Teresa. I know I just saw the Cheshire Cat. Moving pretty quick. Oh, Susie Q. Sweet Liberty. If I've missed anybody. Rolling Stone, how are you? If I've missed anybody, I do apologize. Hey, my sky. I ever said hello to you, my sky? If I have not, welcome. Donna, how are you? Hey, Mona. There is Breezy. Glad you're here. Good to see you. Jeremy Fowler, how are you? Beverly, glad you're here. Breezy, good to see you out of, out of the uh, <coughs> accidental dungeon. Permission to come aboard granted, please. Step aboard. Well, it's Friday night and I ain't got nobody. Actually, I think that's supposed to be Saturday night. Sarah, I cannot have anybody on a Friday too. You watch. Sherry Allen, how are you? Good to see you. Shauna B. Hello. Seventh. Man's a rock star. Man is a rock star. Zelda, what's happening? Janet J. No, I suppose I could do this for the next hour, but we should probably fire this thing up before we run off all the new people. Who the hell? All he does is call out people's names. Hi, cheer me up. Sidetracked? We'll see what we can do. Huh? Hold on. Run a, uh, run a timer. Let me know when you're uh, feeling better. Let's see how fast we did this. Yeah, Alan, were your ears burning? Alan always knows I'm talking about him or someone else says. I promise you. If we're around, we're probably talking about him. All right, there we go. Now, see if we can get you laughing or cheered up. So, I don't know if you saw earlier. I stopped over to uh, old Reese Quibble's channel. Relatable Reese. Uh, funny girl. You know, Butterfly31 saw you in three different chats in the last two or three days. I see you everywhere. I'm a lurker, though. I don't usually pop up and say hello. I usually... Uh, I need a, uh, I need like a, a sock account that I can just like go out under a different name, you know, call myself something else so I can just pop up and chat and say hello. Hey, Debbie Lima, feel like you just left me? I, I, you know what? I get that a lot. <laughs> Lucy Busey. <laughs> I'm sorry. That is really funny. And it's funny because she, uh, she started it. Pajama Pixie, good to see you. Hey, Lynn Sanity. Kim is boo. There is my friend from Israel. Good to see you, my brother. And you're right. Everybody on this boat is pretty fantastic. Hello, Aaron F. Good to see you. Hey, Tinker Mom, what's happening? So let's do this. Uh, let's do this Friday night thing. We got through the week. I think that's a pretty big deal. Um, what have we been talking about? Boy, we've been talking a lot about uh, about this uh, scumbag Sean Combs. His kid, his kid is now on the hook. As it turns out, his kid was uh, not a particularly uh, nice boy on a yacht, and uh, essayed or attempted to the wrong girl. God bless her. Um, and you know what? I think that. All of the people that have come before, I think that so many people who are who are speaking up, right, and talking out are why people like the one that uh, Diddy's uh, kid ran into, where a girl just went, get your hands off of me. I don't care who you are. I don't care that you're famous. Get your freaking hands off of me. Like this girl took no crap. She also went and told the pilot instantly, uh, you are not invisible, Pauline, I promise. 
Sidetracks over four years sober, but a small town and a dude who ran the bakery saved me food when uh, when I came out to give me uh, my food when I had COVID. Small towns make things. Uh, I'm not sure what you said after that. But uh, you know what? There's, yeah, the diddler. He's a piece of shit. I'm sorry. He really is. And his kids know better, man. Bad kid, man. Bad kid. This is that entitlement crap we were talking about the last time we brought this up, man. That entitlement stuff. You know, what do you give someone who has everything? Well, whatever they want, right? So if they want to, if they want to treat the uh, hired help like uh, they're prostitutes instead of, uh, you know, workers, well, you know, he figures he's got that coming. And uh, with the life that he's lived, he probably has had that coming, right? He's probably done whatever the hell he wanted every single time he did it. Nobody ever got him in trouble. Well, I like to see this. I like to see the uh, the pigeons coming home to roost. I really do. I'm sorry. And you know what? I. Uh, It'd be interesting. I've, I've done time with some famous people. I've done time with some famous rappers, if you want to know the truth. I was on the same yard as that uh, Gucci fella, Gucci man. He and I were on the same yard for a minute. And uh, I don't know, they do very different time. Like I said, it's just different. I only can uh, I only can speak to uh, to the, the white car in prison. You know, it gets really, really different with the other races. Everybody runs things just completely how they do it. It's uh, it's unique. Charlie Murphy, speaking of rock stars, what's happening, man? Anita Card says, I think there could be a huge shakedown in Hollywood coming. Or maybe it's a shake up, Anita Card. I think it might be a huge shake up in Hollywood. The shakedowns are when guys like me show up and go, hey, if you don't pay me by Friday, we're going to come back and break the windows in this place. Right? We're offering insurance money. If you don't pay up by Friday, something bad might happen. But if you were to pay the insurance money, I'll make sure that nobody ever breaks any windows in this uh, building. I'll make sure all your deliveries are on time. I'll make sure everything is awesome. However, if you don't pay that, then the deliveries ain't going to be on time because we're going to make sure the trucks don't get there. Right? That's a shake down. You're thinking a shake up. I think. Although there's probably a lot of shakedowns going on too. Give it in the shakedown street. Used to be the heart of town. I'm sorry. Say that in my good ear. Ha ha! My silly town hit the big time. With a record snowfall for the whole state this week, 21 inches. Hello. That's a snowstorm. That is a snowstorm. And that is a snowstorm in the, uh, the spring. Spring snowstorms are the business. I love spring skiing. Man, I love spring skiing. Christy Hughes, you are such a, a lover. I'm telling you, man. You have supported this channel so fan, so kind. Constant, uh, constant support. And it is, I can't begin to tell you what that means to me. I really can't. It's uh I it's it's uh, appreciated. Uh, I would love to out somebody right now. I would love to out somebody right now. Today, I'm not kidding. Today I was uh I was on the phone with somebody and was explaining to them that uh, we needed to make some arrangements. Uh, we were going to be able to uh, to get him on to medical assisted treatment. It was going to happen and it was going to happen today, but it was going to take a minute. We we're going to have to make some arrangements. And that's a that's a hump thing to tell somebody that wants to get clean. You know, give me three or four hours. We're just more making some. It's a hump thing to tell somebody. But I had some transportation issues had some other issues come up and out of the blue. Um, somebody, uh, sent cash that hit the, uh, that hit PayPal and the thing went ding. And I mean, I'm literally on the phone talking to this person and I got a ding and I went, Hey, hold on one second. And I ran over and I looked at PayPal. I was like, oh, as it turns out, we're not going to be waiting on anything. So to all of you that, that are out, I mean, every day supporting this man and making it happen. I really, really appreciate you. I really do. And, uh, the people on medical assisted treatment, um, they really appreciate it too. And you know what? There are people in, there are people here today. There are people here today listening to this who got on medical assisted treatment through the lifeboat and are clean. They, we swear to secrecy, right? We swear to secrecy, but there are people here listening to me today. That is a beautiful thing, man. Brandon, two weeks sober today. Brandon, well played, man. Well played. Uh, Brandon is one of those people that will uh, be successful because uh, Brandon understands that this is a marathon. It's not a sprint. He's been, uh, he's been super, uh, 
He has been super, super uh, solid with that. Getting back up. Thank you, Miss Sunrise Dawn. Thank you, Midnight Show. Great to see you. I was one of my favorites. Two weeks is awesome, and I'm on Suboxone. Two weeks is awesome. I'm on Suboxone my damn self. It's a hell of a drug. Hell of a drug. Um, yeah, at this point, I think it saved as many people as... Um, as uh, penicillin, especially recently. It is the journey, not the destination. Christy, I love you. I really do. You're awesome. You are awesome. Yeah, Christy, I love it. I really do. I love that. 13 years clean. I'm uh, closing in on nine. Can you believe that crap? For those that have been on the boat for a long time, you're like, damn, nine? Yeah, I'm closing in on nine. It was six when we started this thing, but I'm closing in on nine pretty uh, pretty rapidly. It's uh, it's exciting stuff, isn't it? It really is. It's exciting stuff. One of all of my favorite things in the world um, is hearing stories from people that uh, that are making it. Hello, Goblin. Good to see you. Welcome. Um, very often, uh, very often, <sighs> we find ourselves in places where you just can't celebrate your victories. Hey, hey, hey. Sarah Normley, what's happening? I love Sarah. Good to see you. Glad that you're here, Sarah. I am glad that you are here. Yeah, I couldn't put two days together. Man, do I remember those days. Yeah, I mean, I tried. I'm not joking. I used to try every single day to quit. Um, what is the drug for? The drug is to help people get off of, uh, of opiates opioids currently there aren't too many opiates left they're all synthetic these days but it helps people get off opioids uh like fent and the stuff that's on the street now you know uh phytonidazines and uh, isonidazines and just ugly ugly painkillers synthetic painkillers and what this stuff does it's an agonist and an antagonist so it makes you think that you just did dope and it also blocks other dope from working it's a very very unusual substance uh pretty genius really um, but it is saving people right now at a rate that is just astounding. And every single day, uh, every single day, the boat, um, helps people get on it, helps people get on medical assistance treatment. We do it a lot. You know, Layla, I've heard this. Um, Layla asks a great question. Layla says, do people lose their teeth for real? Because there's a lot of, uh, there's a lot of people out there that are talking about this. Uh, my grill is great. Uh, life's good. Good to see you. My grill has remained good. I've not had any problems with my teeth. Uh, here's the problem with any of those stats, right? All of us let our teeth go to crap when we were on dope. I did. I've had a bunch of dental uh, work done, but I had to get a bunch of metal. I mean, a bunch of dental work done. If I didn't, my teeth would be falling out and it would be pretty damn easy to say, you know what? Suboxone did this, Right. You know, so I think that there are some people that it definitely has hurt that way. And I think that there are some people that it didn't, but are going to jump on that lawsuit anyway, because that's the reality, isn't it? I mean, whether or not, whether or not it, everybody, you're going to take a pool of people that nine out of 10 will have not taken care of their teeth when they were partying on heroin, right? That's just kind of how it goes. Um, do you stay on it indefinitely? It's up to uh, every individual whether or not you stay on it or whether or not you do not. Um, yeah, I'd rather lose teeth and be clean. Yeah. Uh, but some people stay on it for life. Some people, I started out at 16 uh, milligrams a day. You do not feel a high. There's no buzz. Um, but I'm down to two. Um, a Venus Diva. I, you know, I think, I think Suboxone probably doesn't help. But I think that a lot of people, if you just take the pool of people that we're talking about, the vast majority already had teeth problems. So I think it's 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 hard. It's hard to know, you know, exactly cause and effect, whether or not. And I I just hope, right? I just hope that a you know a million recovering drug addicts jumping on a class action lawsuit doesn't make them reformulate this or take it off the market, because it's a hell of a drug. It's a miracle drug. Um, so I don't know. I've been blessed because I've been on it, uh, four years, five years, something like that. Hasn't done anything to my teeth yet, but, um, I personally, uh, am probably going to step off, but 
Um, if you stay on it for life, I mean, you know, if you need to stay on it for life, there are some people who have to take, uh, you know, there are people that have to take stuff for their heart and nobody ever goes, oh, bummer, you got to take uh, lisinopril, right? Or, oh, bummer, you got to take, uh, you know, insulin. But it's a real bummer for most people when if they have to talk about taking, you know, eating meth kills your teeth. Oh, yeah, it does. Meth in general, no matter how you get it into your body, ain't real good for your teeth. I promise. But there are people, you know, I got a friend. His name's Lee. And Lee's been doing meth for 30 years that I've known him. And I mean every single day. He's got perfect teeth. <laughs> it's just, who knows? It's uh, it's odd. Valerie says, my best friend is on Suboxone long-term and it saved his life. Uh, here's the deal. I've gotten off of it before. Um, I've gotten off of it before. But uh, Corey, long-time lurker, 25 years today without a drink. God bless you, Corey. Holy heck. 25 years today without a drink. Thank you for providing connection, Tommy. It's the key. I'm grateful to be here. It gets better. I promise. You know what, man? You know, right? 25 years. Take it from Corey. Gets better. 25 years without a drink is epic, man. That is as good as it gets and definitely deserving of the official participation trophy of the lifeboat. Official why? Because we said it is. And that means... It is. Corey, pop up a little more often, man. You got 25 years. We need your uh, we need your wisdom. Believe that. Somebody makes it 25 years, they don't do it because they suck at sobriety. Right? They do it because they're damn good at it. Pop up, share some uh, share some pearls of wisdom, man. Uh, I spent tens of thousands of dollars on my teeth while I was working. Why did that go away? Why did it go away? I spent ten thousand dollars on my teeth while I was still working since retirement. I don't have dental insurance. Old dental work is falling apart. Subi, I get that. I get that. That's probably where uh, where I'm at here shortly. You know. Christy, it is absolutely case by case. I know it is. Um, Seven Sun says I lost mine to prescribed Dilaudid. Dilaudid's hell on teeth. Dilaudid is hell on teeth. Well, Cinepril is ugly for a lot of people. There are people for that that it's a miracle drug for it. And I've heard other people with the same symptoms that you were talking about where you just, you know, really is bad stuff. We stumble, we get up, we try again. I get knocked down, but I get up again. You're never going to keep me down. I can get knocked down. I don't know if I told you this. But the first time I heard that, I was on a, a bus going to prison. I'm not joking. It was just one of those things that comes on the radio, and I looked at the cat next to me. I'm like, holy hell. It's the perfect song to go to prison to, isn't it? Like, this is a great go-to-prison song. Not for nothing. This is a great go-to-prison song. I get knocked down. I will get back up. I promise. I'm going to get back up. I'm going to get back up. Uh, so what do you think, people? I feel like we're on... Uh, I feel like we're on... Um, Diddy watch at this point. Like I'm not being funny. I think we're literally, uh, this is, uh, this is Diddy watch. I think, uh, indictments, uh, are going to start coming down here any day. I think that, uh, I think dude's in a whole lot of trouble. I really do. I think he can get out of it. What mm -hmm. I am drinking by the way is lemonade. I think he can get out of the trouble if he starts giving up the people above him. Cause there are people above him. Make no mistake. Clive Davis is a piece of crap. He's above him. Uh, there are bodies. There are bodies. There are uh, there are uh, a lot of uh, a lot of bad things that have happened. What is Suboxone used for? It is used to keep people from uh, going back on uh, opiates, opioids. It blocks the receptor and makes your brain think it did um, drugs. It did the drug that you used to be on. Feel me? Avina, I think he's gonna sing too. The guy's got priors, man. He's already rat he's already ratted out somebody. He's already worked with the feds. It's it's already happened, right? This is real. So the odds of him doing it again, I don't think are uh, are slim. I think they're pretty damn good if you want to know the truth. I think it's pretty damn solid. 
<laughs> you hear people calling it Diddy Gate. Um, what does methadone do? Methadone does the same thing, but in a different way. Methadone is an actual painkiller, right? A no joke, uh, you know, opiate that will get you high. Okay? It will get you wrecked. But in the because of most of the people who are taking it have such a high opiate tolerance, giving them a smaller amount of it, right? Say 80 to 100 milligrams blocks them from being able to use other opiates in theory. Trouble is it doesn't really work that way. You can mix it with heroin. You can't mix heroin and Suboxone, but you can mix heroin and uh, uh, methadone. Methadone was just the first drug treatment, right? Medical assisted treatment for uh, opioid addiction. The newer version of it, the more uh, effective version of it is Suboxone. And now there is a newer version um, that is uh, sublocade, but there are these, which is a, a 30 day shot. Listen, I'm going to be covering Dan Schneider and, and Amanda Bynes. This is a story we're going to be doing, and it's probably going to have to take four shows. I've been deep diving that entire situation now for days. Number one, man, you're going to have to brush your teeth when, when I'm done talking about it. I'm not even joking, man. It's one of those things that when you when you talk about this, you, you feel just disgusting. It's like you want to get up and take a shower when it's over, right? Dan Snyder is a piece of crap. I mean, you talk about somebody that really needs to get, you know, it's it's ugly. It really is. Uh, and and you know something, people. I, I told you that I was prior to 86, I mean, uh, to 46 years of age, I was not a good person, right? I've been pretty open about this. I picked on Amanda Bynes. I, I cracked Amanda Bynes jokes, right? I was always waiting to see, uh, I was always waiting to see, you know, what kind of, of, uh, of antics the girl was going to, uh, was going to pull. And you know what, man, it's uh, it's tragic. It really is. I'm a dirt bag. And, and I, I feel bad about it. I'm not saying that flippantly. I really, really feel bad about it. Uh, he's, uh, he's an awful, awful person. Um, and you know what? Something's got to be done. I'm just hoping that, you know, this is, uh, this is one of those things. Puffy could actually set, uh, share a cell with R. Kelly. Like that's possible. They're both, uh, you know, one's already in the feds and the other definitely looks like it's going to, uh, to the feds. Kristen Melinda says, I think a lot of people crack jokes before we knew better. Yeah, you know, it's just, I I, uh, I think back, I, I even when I was a drug addict, I was never a misogynist. I was never a jackass. But that kind of thing is something that I, I think, uh, yeah, we've matured as a society. I certainly have matured as a person. I wasn't, uh, I wasn't a particularly, uh, I don't know. The, those weren't the kind of things that I spent a lot of time thinking about, you know, but what happened to Amanda Bynes is a friggin, uh, is literally a, a crime. It's a tragedy. And, uh, the truths are coming out. Oh, I see. Sidetrack. So Sorry, bad post. No addiction or anything. He looked after me every morning and saved my usual order. When I had COVID, he came out to serve me and thanked me for being considerate in a town of 10,000, you know? Wow, that's incredible. That's incredible. Um, and I love that. Don't you guys? For real. Kevin Hoffing, Lakeland, Florida. Every single person in that town knows who he is. Honestly, it's worth Googling. Um, He's an amazing dude. He's a crew member on the lifeboat. Every single person in Lakeland, Florida knows who he is. Every single person in Lakeland, in Lakeland, uh, in Lakeland, Florida, uh, talks about him. They've done uh, a special on him on the news. If you Google it, you'll see it. It's amazing. Our guy, Kevin Hawthorne, Lakeland, Florida. Really, really a good dude, man. Somehow they all seem to find the boat, right? Birds of a feather, I think they say, right? You people attract good people. You know what deeming deeming, you know, we got a lot of smart people here. 
Deeming says, Tommy, have you noticed the Nickelodeon stuff has quieted down since Diddy was raided? I think the powers that be decided better him than us. You know what? You're not the first person that said this to me. I've heard this from other people who I think are pretty damn sharp. And you know something? Makes you wonder. It also makes you wonder, what are we not looking at? Hey, Russ, what are we not looking at, right, while all this is going on? Because both of those things, as much as they are big news, right, we certainly stopped talking about everything else when the Diddy stuff started to break. And the the ugly ripples, somebody said those uh, the ripples from Diddy are going to be huge. The ripples from Diddy have been going out in the ugly direction for a really long time. Thank you, Sidetracked, by the way. Uh, Epstein, same thing, right? Same thing. Oh, Avina. Oh, my God. Avina Sativa says, I would like to see when Scientology gets opened up uh, to see their... Uh, to see their rancid innards. We barely skimmed the surface. I mean to tell you, you want to talk about a day that's going to be fun when they bring that puppy down. Um, how about all of those files, right? All of those files. You'd like to think that they just, you know, have a bonfire, right? And because think of all of the secrets of all of the people, right? I mean, just poor Tom Cruise. Think of all of the times that poor guy has gone in there and got on that machine and says, I just want a woman who's going to love me for the man I pretend to be, right? And one that, uh, you know, is short enough that when she wears heels, she's not taller than I am. I think he probably spends a lot of time on the e-meter working about these things. I want to give a huge shout out to RTR, Matrix Rabbit, and to Saguaro Christmas. You guys have been amazing. Thank you for not just connection, but being good friends. I love that. I love that. And that's the magic of the boat right there, peeps. Right? I promise you. It's not the fact that I'm so darn good looking, right? Or, uh, yeah, Clive Davis is a massive enabler. It really is all about the, uh, it's all about the the crowd, right? It's all about the people in the, uh, the people in the gallery here, man. The crew of the lifeboat is the reason that people keep coming back to the lifeboat. Clive Davis is, Clive Davis is a massive enabler. He's also a billionaire, right? Made a lot of money, right? A lot of money in rock and roll. And this cat, you know, like I was saying in the last show, he's been using the same dope dealer for 50 years. Think about that, people. For real. This guy was buying dope from people in the 60s. And those same people have been, you know, have gone through the, well, we were getting the acid and quaaludes. They're gone, right? You know, not, well, acid's not gone, but you know what I'm saying. Quaaludes are gone. Coke went through the Coke, you know, thing of the 70s. And then the big Coke thing of the 80s. And heroin, heroin's gone steady supplying him and his people. You know, a lot of people talk about Bobby Brown getting uh, Whitney Houston strung out on uh, crack. To be sure, the guy liked rock, right? And he definitely smoked a lot of it with Whitney. But by all accounts, Clive was a huge facilitator of her drug habit. And Hummingbird, good to see you. Fancy Nancy, what's happening? Zen, what? Good to see you. Dennis Zen, what's happening? Hey, Izzy. Good night, butterfly. Louie Louise. We did a little in the 60s. Did a little dope in the 60s. Yeah, there was some, there was some dope getting done in the 60s. Yeah, that's that is the word on the uh, on the street. Yeah, I think at 90, you know, Mary Deer says Clive wants money more than anything. And I think Mary Deer is right. He's, he was a slave to money. Um, but he also had some serious sexual dysfunction. And I don't mean, I don't care what you want to sleep with. But if you can't come to grips with what you want to sleep with, then you've got some damn dysfunction, right? So this is a guy that struggled. Uh, Clive Davis, you know, this is a guy that struggled with his own sexuality. Uh, and by all accounts, you know, he's uh, he's pretty, you know, cool with his sexuality now. But um, a lot of people got pretty screwed up along the way, you know, because in order to get, if you if you're a self-loathing gay man who works with that kind of power, how many people do you think that he, uh, you know, treated bad to to take care of those uh, kind of sick, twisted um, things? If you know what I mean, right? He had the ability to treat the music industry the way Masterson treated the uh, the Sea Org, right? Just victimize people that uh, he knew were not going to uh, going to have the ability to then go to uh, the police. The people in the music uh, industry aren't going to uh, the police with with uh, Clive Owens, I promise you.
Sidetracked, you're cool. And uh, tell you what, thoughts and prayers. I am sorry for your loss. Thoughts and prayers going out to uh, to you, Sidetracked. And uh, rest in peace, Stuart. I'm sorry for your loss. Tell you what, I am not a fan of four-wheelers, man. I'm not a fan of three-wheelers. I'm not a fan of any of those damn things. Not that you need to hear that now. I apologize. But phew, I hate, you know, motorized things have never been particularly good to, uh, to any of us. Do that, Calhounis. Take care of your business. Take care of your business. Um, yeah, please. That's horrible. My boy has not had warm water, hot water in his house all day. That's uncivilized, man. And I'll tell you something. Don't get it messed up. Tucson? Tucson's not all that warm today, is it, Calhoun? Boy, it's cold right now. It is cold right now. We really are sorry for your loss, Sidejack. Um, it's... Uh, Boy, it seems like, uh, you know, the the, uh, the bigger you get, right? Uh, when we were a smaller channel, it would, you know, a month would go by and then, you know, we we would have somebody that, that uh, you know, ex experienced a loss. When you get up around 10 to 15,000 people, there's somebody every day is suffering from something. And, you know, the bigger you get, it's just, it's a, it is a constant. On the bright side, right? The wind, you're right. Saguaro Christmas, the wind is vicious right now here 42 outside here in nashville shelly kelly windy there too huh yeah it's i mean it's brutal right now it's all right it's back now we'll go get in that shower then man z dub yeah this happens um yeah no reason to be sorry at all and it, it's it's a Tough, it's a tough time to be sure it's a tough time when you're uh, you know people there, there isn't a, I don't care what anybody says there's no handbook for grieving you know and even the ones that they do right you know well, there's the five stages of grief and yeah, they're different for every single person right nobody grieves the same way no two people grieve the same way and and even if they did they wouldn't grieve the same scene the same way right it's just different Tommy Bird good to see you man Sorry, just checking, checking, checking. Yeah, Fancy Nancy, what's the story with that? So you had two quakes. Did you feel both of them or what? Huh? Yeah, we have a West and an East Coast Fancy Nancy, and I don't know if we've ever had both of you in the room at the same time. If so, I don't remember it, but I know which one's which. So my uh, my New Jersey Fancy Nancy, did you uh, did you feel it? Uh, Jersey Fancy Nancy. Yeah, some in upstate New York. It's your birthday, Christy. Happy birthday. Happy birthday to you, Christy. That's awesome. Christy Hughes, happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear Christy. Happy birthday to you. Hey, Spanks Calhoun was about to bust that out with me. And then I saw him shake me off like a catcher. He did this one here. Right? You know, catchers do that stuff. No, I'm kidding. He wasn't. He wasn't even considering it. He knew better. He knew better. He said, I'm not singing with him. The old man's going to look stupid. Happy birthday, Christy. I love it. And uh, you know what? I have a feeling your, uh, your luck's going to change there. I love Las Vegas too, by the way. Uh, there are people that don't. I dig Vegas. I really do. I dig Vegas. I dig Nevada in general, but yeah, I, I like Vegas. Wait a second. Oh, no. Zen Wayne, are you seeing this? You were born at 1.23 a.m., so it's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. Are you kidding? Z-Dub. Z-Dub likes numbers. How about 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 for the birth numbers? Ouch! Christy Hughes, do you know who uh, the uh, the numbers lady is? <laughs> do you know who I'm talking about? 
was there a woman that used to go on coast to coast AM. I don't know if you're a coast to coast AM fan, but I used to listen to her uh, when I was in prison. Her name is Glennis or Glenda, Glenda, Glendis, Glenda, Glenda. It starts, it starts like Glenn, Glenda, Glendis, Glenda, something like that. But she is the numbers lady. But she would come on and go, okay, you call in. What? Uh, I'll explain to you how this works. And she would go, what you want to do is take the day that you're born, the year that you're born, add the two of them together with the month, right? And she just, she would do it so fast. And there would be four of us in the same cell, right? Because we were in the shoe. And we'd all be looking at each other going, you, you understand what she's saying? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Never, ever worked. Every one of us. Glennis, there you go. Terry Ray, you know who I'm talking about. See, Terry Ray knows who I'm talking about. The numbers lady. I could never understand what the hell she was talking about. And I never had a pen. You know, we were in the shoe, so couldn't write anything down. <laughs> yeah, Glennis is still around. The numbers lady is definitely still around. And it's Glennis because somebody just uh, corrected me. But she goes on coast to coast all the time. And uh, she does some really cool stuff with. Uh... Here's the deal. I could never do it my, with my own numbers, but uh, there was a guy who called Glennis McCantus. There you go. McCants rather. Uh, there was a guy who called in whose birthday was so close to mine that the numbers were almost identical. And when she started to spit out all of the things that would be like his characteristics, I'm like, yeah, I don't know. And all the people in the room were like, are you kidding, bro? He's describing you perfectly. Of course you never think, you know, no, Spanx, what are you telling? You're not allowed to tell anything, Spanx. I just got to watch. You know what I mean? Keep that crap in the family. The kid. Oh, Calhoun is. Good for you, man. Well, I've got uh, CERN, the proton collider going back into commission in 2024 is a weird year so far. I did not know that the uh, the Hadron Collider was going to be uh, firing back up. Is that 100% true? They're going to be firing up the um, uh, about to collide. Yeah, well, you know, what could possibly go wrong? I, I'll be honest with you. What they do at CERN, right? It may be the coolest thing on the world, right? Like it's a very cool concept, but I'm not going to lie to you. It scares the crap out of me a little bit. Yeah, you're going to take her to Thunder Bacon Burger and, uh, and get the uh, the Scoville burn? There you go. There you go. <sighs> yeah, I'm not a... Uh, you're an EMS worker. Oh. Yeah, I would imagine, Fancy Nancy, that this probably screws with a lot of people's dome. But it is a good burger, to be sure. It's a really good burger. Oh, Tina, yeah, that's hard. CERN is going to fire this up. Uh the day of the eclipse, NASA will be launching three rockets. There is a comet coming in called the Devil Comet. Yeah, I heard about that. Um, and there is a release of cicadas that day, too. Um, the second or the third largest release of cicadas in the history of our country. Pretty big ones. Yeah, it kind of sounds a little end of the worldy kind of stuff, doesn't it? But, uh, you know. I want a good seat. One explanation of the atmospheric moodiness of the world and our loved ones currently. Well, that could be the case too. The cicadas are a weird topping. If we could figure out how to eat those, I think we'd be in really good shape. There's a lot of them. There are a lot of those things. I think, uh, I think they're talking about trying to get us to eat them too. Or they're no mealworms. Uh, my birthday is in July, but I'm going to stop celebrating it. Uh, this whole getting old thing blows and I don't really see like uh, that. I want to do a whole lot more of it, you know? So that's about that. That's uh, so, so that's going to work. Has squirrel finished off that catnip plant? It's pretty funny that you say that because she actually has finished off literally the catnip plant. 
yeah, they would be crunchy. Although I prefer crunchy to almost anything else. I like things that are burnt. I like things that are uh, that are hot. Uh, crispy's good. I like my bacon so crispy that you know it kind of disintegrates. I want to feel like I'm almost eating carbon. Feel me? Uh, that's so. What day is the uh, what day is the eclipse? What what day, Calhoun? Do we know when the eclipse is? Because I'll be honest, a lot of people are talking about it, but I don't know what day it is. I do, however, remember being in prison, and a guy said to me, "If we keep beating on the uh, on the uh, atmosphere, I mean, beating on the planet the way we're doing, we're going to get a lot more of these eclipses." Four eight. Thank you. He goes, "We're going to be getting a lot more of these eclipses," and I go. I'm sorry, what? He's like, yeah, all the pollution and stuff. I said, um, I promise you the pollution is not causing the uh, the eclipses. I was writing, a, I was working on a book called Stupid Things I Heard in Federal Prison, and that was getting put on the list. You're totally in the path. I love it. Whoa, flying cat. What are you doing, squirrel? Nut? Other than being a bad cat, what are you doing? She's eating something. I'm telling you, that cat is out of control. Solar flares are nuts. I hope you're checking out uh, Mark Wages. He was live today. I was lurking. The lifeboat space date. There you go. Do, 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 do. Yeah, she always wants a snack. She's uh, welding masks <clears throat> work to view an eclipse. They do. They do. Wages said some good stuff today. He always does. That's my that's my boy. Uh, Mark has an understanding of the subject matter that is um, uh, honestly second to none. And when you understand something that well, you can explain it to people that do not understand it well. You feel me? Um, and that's, I think, uh, that's his superpower is that he can even explain it to somebody like me. You know what? Blonde moments are always allowed. And do you know why? Because they are uh, always experienced by blondes. I'm just a fan. I don't know. Good night, my brother. Take it easy, Matrix Rabbit. Stay safe. Um, I am uh, just a fan of the blonde. I don't know what it is. I just am a fan of the blonde. So uh, where is this path? I think I remember hearing at one time that it was going to take you through Dallas. Like Dallas was going to be. Um, Tommy, goof in prison here will cause a beatdown. Like if you say the word goof, um, here the two words that will get you a, a beat down in a prison is if you say punk or bitch. Those are the two words that you do not drop in a uh, in a prison, right? If you call somebody either of those two names, a fight is going to happen. Guaranteed. Guaranteed. I hope that's what you were asking me. What word is it there? Yeah, the, there's two words here. And those are the two words. Punk, right? You call somebody a punk or you call somebody a bitch or the combination of the both, right? And then uh, it's on and cracking. Uh, starts in Texas and goes right through Vermont. Holy crap. That sounds, good night, Matrix. That does sound like uh, I lived in both those places, you know. Okay, good. Yeah, those are the two. Dripping Springs, Texas is in the path. Oh, anywhere in Canada, not just in prison. That that word will get you smacked in or out of prison. I got gotcha. you. Do you know how to get a blonde out of a tree? Yeah, you're way better. Yeah. You want to hear my favorite blonde joke of all time? The blonde girl calls up. Uh, she dials 911 and says, uh, my house is on fire. 
you got to do something. You got to come out here. You got to help me. My house is on fire. Save me quick. The guy said, okay, calm down. How do we get there? She goes, duh, in your big red truck. But that's my favorite blonde joke. And the reason is so that when you're dating a blonde girl, let's just say hypothetically, I found one. Oh, I don't know. There's, there are blondes lying around. Let's say I were to just drop this on, say, a, a close friend who's a blonde, right? I could drop it on, uh, on Reese, for instance. Now, once you've told somebody that joke, for the rest of eternity, every time they do something that's just a little stupid or blonde, you can just look at them and go, big red truck, right? That is the best, right? It's not the, it's not the initial joke. It's being able, it's being able to just at a later date, look at them and go, big red truck. Love that. Always been a big fan of that. It's another Saturday night and I ain't got nobody. I got some money because I just got paid. I am, uh, yeah, they, uh, in, in, in the jurt, they lock you down for eclipses. Do you know why? Because they're afraid you're going to stare at it. Yeah, they are afraid you are going to stare at it. Uh, what are you doing, Kitty? Are you getting a little lippy and out of control? You have been, I mean, off work all day. Cat has done nothing. I mean, nothing. You saying different words to that? Uh... Jeremy, are you near? Can you tell the tractor story? Henny, don't encourage him. Uh, no, I'm kidding. You used to play that song on the uh, on the jukebox? Well, it is a good one. Uh, what rhymes with paid? Oh, okay, gotcha. Yeah, my friend used to say, hey, it's Friday night. It's the night we get paid. It's the night we try to get what rhymes with paid. He used to say that every single payday. Uh, probably uh, probably was one of the reasons he didn't get uh, laid off. Of. Spent a lot of time talking about it. Uh, no jukebox in sight at cafes anymore. You know, that's kind of sad, isn't it? Isn't it? Yeah. You know what? Um, so in prison, gassing is a term. The only time I've ever heard that term is when they throw uh, feces and urine at you. Not particularly nice. Um, that uh, there are a lot. They do end up gassing a, a group of people. A lot of people are encouraged to enlist. Uh, I got pressed up on pretty hard. To, uh, to join prison gangs when I got there because I was big, you know, and they, they, uh, the bigger you are, the more they would like to, to have you on board. And they, they push this race, racial stuff. And that, that I honestly, I, I was not against the idea of joining a prison gang. I really wasn't. In fact, it seemed like a pretty good idea. It seemed like the guys that were in prison gangs got a lot of free dope. And at that time, dope was uh, pretty important to me. Um, the problem was that I had to hate people. Like there was a whole list of people that I had to hate. And more importantly, not only did I have to hate them, but on the flip side of that, I had to just as messed up. I had to, um, like people solely because they were white. And, uh, that, uh, that was something I wasn't ready to do. Can I take my shirt off? Um, I mean, I probably could. Uh, I don't know that, uh, I don't know that it makes for good, uh, for good YouTube, but, uh, but I probably could. I mean, I, I, let me rephrase that. I absolutely can, um, take my shirt off whether or not I will. Um, I, you know what, here's the deal. I would be okay on any yard. I promise you. And I am of the firm belief that if you're a good person, doesn't matter where you go, you're going to be all right. For real. And I know that that may sound crazy, but there are good criminals. There are people that screwed up and there are good people who get into prison. And there are and there are bad people who do time well. 
What I mean by that is I knew some guys that I would not let in my house. Good night, Fancy Nancy, West Coast. West Coast Fancy Nancy. Friday night gets a little loud sometimes. It's another Friday night and I ain't got nobody. Be blinded by the glare. Blinded by the light. Da, da, da. Yeah, the eclipse are fascinating. It forms an A, you say. Jen Marie, um, please have a good night's sleep, and I hope that uh, tomorrow is um, easy, as easy as possibly can be. It's going to be a hard day. I just hope that... Uh, I hope it goes well. I really do. I hope it goes well. Uh, it's Friday night and I'm eating Costco meatloaf. Okay. Nothing wrong with that. You know what I uh, ate tonight? Huh? Good stuff. I ate a fiery hot burrito, which I think uh, came from a package at Costco. Uh, not particularly fiery hot. Not even by non chili head standards. Rolling Stones sticking around because I'm doing Blinded by the Light. I am a uh, I am a fan of blinded by the light. He got down, but you never grow ties. You're gonna make it. Who is that? Manfred Band and his uh, Earth Band or something. You've been listening to Muddy. I mean, you can't go wrong listening to the Muddy Waters. You know what, crazy girl? I canceled my trip, but thank you for your uh, kindness. Um, I am not traveling this um, this week, and I'll tell you why. On account of the fact that I'm lazy. No, I'm kidding. I'm not. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, you're not allowed to talk about your cooking? Okay. All right, that's right. I haven't even eaten yet, and I'm going to be going and getting one of these hump. Actually, I really did like the burritos. I was going to pick on them, but you know what? They're pretty good. They really are. They're pretty good, especially, especially as far as like instant burritos go. I'm a big fan of anything you can toss in a microwave and in a minute and a half eat, right? I like food that is quick. It is what it is, man, but I'm a fan of food. Did you see this, by the way? Huh? Huh? I'm a fan. Am I doing lives? I'm going to be doing lives every day. Yeah, the whole weekend. I'm not going anywhere, Brazy. I will be here all weekend, and I will be doing lives all weekend. Thank you, Craft Witch. Uh, Crafty Witch, I dig this shirt. I really do. This was a gift. This was a gift. Dig it. Dig it. Dig it. Uh, I do like shirts. I do like shirts. Uh yeah, I uh, I get the coolest shirts from people, man. I really do. It's uh, it's one of my favorite things. They are, you know what? Microwaves are awful and they cause cataracts. My last uh, wife was so anti-microwave that we weren't allowed to have one in the house, right? So I had a microwave, but I was forced to keep it in the um, in the garage. And the funny thing about that is we went and saw American uh, Hustle. You remember that movie? One of the girls in American Hustle, uh, Jennifer Lawrence's character, referred to the uh, microwave as the science oven. Remember she blew it up? Well, my ex-wife would call it the science oven. <laughs> She's like, you're not getting a science oven. I'm like, oh, no, no, I'm getting a science oven. I'm absolutely getting a science oven. Uh, I wear extra large everything. I mean, for a guy that everybody likes to laugh about me being thin and all that, I'm a big dude. <laughs> I'm not particularly, uh, I'm not thin. I'm just not fat. I'm not. Every uh, Thursday night, you eat a Tommy cheeseburger at Tommy's number one in LA. This may come as a shock to you, but I have had a Tommy's uh, cheeseburger from Tommy's number one in LA. It's a great burger. 
Um, never had a microwave there. Evil? I I won't argue that. I uh, I think these science ovens are probably particularly evil, um, and I think they probably are going to take you off the planet a little bit earlier. For real, I think if you're using one all the time, you're probably going to die four or five years earlier. You know what I mean? I do think that there's probably some truth to that, but I'm not going to lie to you. I don't see it taking 16 to 20. You know what I mean? Probably not going to take those years. It's probably going to take what? Uh, say 87 to 91. Uh, you can have those. I'm not trying to be a jerk, but I, the rate I'm falling apart, I don't think I want to hit. Uh, I don't think I want to hit 90. 80. I'd be stoked with 80, but uh, you're an extra medium. I like it. I like it. Um, by the way, if you go back, uh, whoever said, "Will I take my shirt off?" If you go back, Spanx Calhoun put a uh, a picture of me up without a shirt on. I promise you, he did. Uh, and I'm doing a before and after sh uh, a before and after shoot. So I will be showing some pictures of uh, of uh, me with no shirt on here pretty quick. Anyway. Hey, Renee B. I think this is a two-parter. Let's see if we can get the beginning of a comment. Tommy, you always seem so together. <laughs> I'm kidding. Uh, I'm a nurse and take in a lot of emotional information during the day. So many nurses like myself come from dysfunctional families. Um, I think there's probably uh, something to that, right? We learn to figure stuff out on the fly. Uh, very often we're the people that even from a very young age, we're the people that keep the family together kind of a thing, huh? Sidetracked. I remember those days, you know, uh, having to clean the house before the landlord would come in to fix something. Or Yeah, I mean, I was, I was usually... You'll be 80 in two years, Tina? Well, you look fantastic. Uh, I'll tell you what, Ray Ray, just don't take it to uh, to um, the Geek Squad. What are they, where are they at? Circuit City? The Geek Squad? I want to tell you something. Uh, we, uh, we took a computer there to get it fixed. These jack wagons, I'm telling you, it was the worst experience I've ever had with any business in history. I'm not playing this is a free anti-commercial, right? Best Buy. Sorry. That that Geek Squad, I have never had anything, right? I have never, ever had anything go worse in the entire time I've been on planet Earth. They took a computer in for us. Didn't fix it. Sent us an email telling us that it was fixed and to pick it up at a different store than the one we dropped it off at. Didn't make a lot of sense. But uh, yeah, Circuit Cities was the 80s. You know what, Huff? That was about the last time I was out doing anything. I think it was the 80s. <laughs> Checks out. Um, yeah, well, we uh, we ended up losing our minds on this deal because we, we get over there and they're like, no, nah, we don't have your computer. You know, why would we have your computer here? It's not where you dropped it off. We're like, how in hell would we know? You sent us an email that said, pick it up at this address. He's like, well, it doesn't make sense. Well, it didn't make sense to us either, but what do we know? We're new in this town. We figured maybe all of the stuff gets fixed in one store, right? Who knows? But um, anyway, we go and pick the thing up after wasting three or four hours of our lives, really. We go and pick the thing up, and they, they didn't fix it anyway. So we ended up, yeah, I mean, I'm not going to lie to you. I know, I know I'm not a... Uh, Avina Sadiva says, you're better off dropping off your appliances in the uh, forest for the woodland creatures to fix. <laughs> I love that. Uh, I, I am a pretty big fan of uh, of dropping the person, you know, I don't know if you remember the beginning of the New Jack City, right? Um, I just kind of want to hold somebody by their ankles over the, uh, over the bridge and drop them. Got your protein balls delivered today? I'll tell you what, you know what one of my favorite things in the world to do with those things are, right? I eat them like cereal. I put milk on them, right? Eat an ounce of them in the morning. 125, 125 uh, calories, right? And like 35 or something grams of protein. It's just a great way to start the day. Alan Tommy's chili cheese burger fun. You know what, 7th? It's funny because when Alan gets here, Alan's going to pay 
for that crazy crap that he did to me, right? That crazy crap that he did to me the last time we were here. He's my homeboy. I said to him, hey, uh, let's uh, let's do some uh, some peppers together. Here's the deal. For every pepper I eat, right? Um, I mean, for every pepper you eat, I'll eat two, right? Now, this is my ace deuce. You figure the guy will go, okay, you know, and then get in there and, and do, oh, I'll eat one or two of them, right? I'll eat one or two of them. No, he ate like eight of them or something. So I ended up eating some ungodly amount of, of peppers and it almost killed me. This is what's up with the journals. Um, Spanky actually got everything done. And then I vetoed the, uh, you'll have them in this week, guaranteed 100%. And I'm not stroking that. You really will. We've got this figured out. But I shouldn't say we. I had nothing to do with this. My son did it. And uh, and the problems prior to that were on me. But Calhoun's got it figured out. He really does. Um, Renee, I don't know what's going It's It's cutting off your comment. I'm sorry, Hen. That sucks. Let's see if I can find. You know what, Renee? You don't have to be ready to quit yet, right? You don't have to be in a hurry to quit. Do you know how many people have showed up here literally for a year? Um, it looks like uh, it looks like they're kicking off uh, some of her comments. She's having problems with it. Sometimes this happens. The big red button isn't uh, isn't foolproof. I promise you. Um, absolutely not uh, not foolproof. But listen, there are people that showed up listening drunk for a year. That's okay, Renee. Renee says I'm drunk. That's okay. Does not bother me, I promise you. Um, I'm not mad at you. Everybody here had a habit for a really long time, right? I had a habit until the day I didn't. <laughs> right? Everybody here had a habit until the day they didn't. You're not going to come by here, right? Uh, we're hoping that you're going to hear enough while you have a buzz to bring you back when you don't have a buzz. Right? That's the goal. Come, keep coming back. Doesn't matter whether you buzzed or not. Just keep coming back. I promise you, it pays off in the long run. A lot of people here will uh, back me up on that. It pays off in the long run. Here's a good one. No, I am not too young to have skied at the Crazy Canucks. No, I am not too young to have skied with them. They competed uh, years before I was, but um, but we uh, that's the same time the same time period. They were probably four years older than me. So I know exactly who you're talking about. Yeah. Honesty is a great start. Renee B. Coming here and saying, you know what? I got a buzz. You don't have to. Don't apologize. What the hell are you apologizing for? No, guess what? Apologizing for coming to a meeting with a buzz on is like apologizing for going to a hospital for feeling sick. Right? doesn't make any sense at all. I promise you, you didn't offend anybody here, Renee. In fact, look at my friends, all of them. Miss Dragon says, Renee B, no reason to apologize. Come on. Yeah, 88 Olympics. No, I'm. that's right in the wheelhouse. Right in the wheelhouse. Yeah, no judgment, Renee. You're in the right place. Glad you're here. No need to apologize. You seeing all of this? I went back and forth with quitting for a few years before I actually got uh, in my four years and two months of sobriety. It's all good. You got to start somewhere, right? And where do you start? You start with a buzz. <laughs> That's where you start. No, we can talk about Diddy's son. Diddy's son is uh, is accused of um, sexually assaulting somebody on a uh, on a um, a yacht, on a chartered yacht. The girl told the captain the following day. And the captain basically treated her like crap, said she that uh, didn't believe her. This went on for a long time until she was run off the boat. But uh, now she's coming out of the woodwork like everybody else. And I think that's great. I think that's great. And I believe her. Sounds sounds very believable to me. Sounds very believable to me. I heard from Scooby this morning, Anna Banana. I haven't heard from her since, but Scooby was good this morning. But I'm glad you're asking. I love Scoob. Renee B, just be here and feel the love and support. Cheshire Cat's got it down, right? That's literally what we're looking for. Just stick around, right? This is a, uh, it's a pretty loving group. I promise. 
Yeah, Jill, I, I believe her too. Very believable, yeah? Very believable. Yeah, Venus says they can't kill all the whistleblowers now. Funny you say that, right? Because if you look at the number of people that Diddy worked with in the first deal he did, everybody's dead except Diddy and one other cat, and that cat almost died. Um, all right, people. Yeah, how many of us have already eaten today? Never quit quitting. Uh, Hanging Lou Ray Ray says, I've watched the lifeboat high. Yep. I've watched the lifeboat drunk. I've watched the lifeboat sober. But no matter what, I always come. Yeah, you know what? Keep watching. Keep watching. There's no way to stop this train, Catalina. You're dead right. You're dead right. There's no way to stop this train. This this is uh, this is reaping what you sow, right? This is it. Oh, no way. We've been praying for this, right? You remember this, everybody? My dear friend has been in a coma. Remember, this is the person that was choking while driving. Chrissy talked about this a while ago. Today, she gave her sister the peace sign. How good is that? Oh, man. Chrissy, you must be flying. Huh? You must be flying. How cool is that? Huh? Honest to goodness, that is about as good as it gets, man. I love that. That is huge. It really is. Wow. That is huge. Good night, Subi. Uh, that is amazing. Chrissy, we're going to keep the prayers uh, coming. The docs are shaking their heads. Well, you know what? I've been there when a lot of doctors have shaken their heads. In the 53 years I've been on this planet, the number I've seen, the number of times I've seen doctors say to me, uh, we can't explain it. I'll tell you what. I love the honesty. It says, I've been here with a drink in one hand and a joint in the other. Just stay on the boat. We got you. You're not alone. No judgment here from anybody. That's right, ever. Lumen, no question, right? Is that not the best news ever? I mean, literally, that's the best news ever. Everything else we're talking about here today is trivial. <laughs> it is. That's the best news ever. And I'm just going to say this for the official record. I know more than you. You don't know who I'm sending that to, but uh, that if you thought about it. Your aunt worked for a doc and watched them go to the back room uh, to look stuff up in their book. Oh, I believe that. Oh, I believe that. Um, yeah, it's a long road. It's a long road, but that's the start of a long road, right? That that's the that's the part that says I can do this. You would guess Reese. That's probably a, probably a decent. Uh, it's probably a decent guess. Yeah, you'll never get kicked off the boat. It's hard to get kicked off the boat. You really got to be a jack wagon. You kind of got to go out of your way. Um, oh, she's lurking. Quibble's lurking. If I were to call her uh, Anna Nicole, or uh, or if I were to say, you know those, uh, you know those golden geese, uh, those sneakers that she buys, they're made in China. Make no mistake, they brag about this like made in Italy stuff. Stuff's made in China, and I'll be honest with you. You kind of look at me, you go, it seems a little steep. Now, I realize that I buy watches that are ridiculously expensive or whatever, but they're functional, right? They're works of art. They're not, they don't look like, hey, is the only reason this thing expensive because of the name on it? Because that, you know, you kind of get that feeling. It doesn't seem like, but no, she's, she's really not here. Uh, yes, don't wave at her if she climbs a tree. I love it. I, I will not, I promise. Rock the boat, don't rock the boat, baby. Rock the boat, don't kick the boat over. Made overseas by kids in China. And then they smuggle them into uh, into Italy where these people then claim that they made them and they're now, you know, $700 pair of sneaks. Uh, yes, you may come aboard. We are pretty close to the end of this three-hour tour. All right, it wasn't a three-hour tour, but how did I... It's the Gilligan's Island theme song. Yes, Golden Goose 
uh, geese are literally golden. Well, they would have to be at that price now, wouldn't they? I mean, for real. Anything that costs that much money should taste excellent, right? I could justify spending that much money on something that tastes good, but not, not, and I like shoes. I'm, I'm a shoe guy. I have a huge collection of shoes. In fact, I probably have. I knew it. I knew she was lurking. I knew it. See that? She's a lurker. You're a lurker. You're a lurker. That rude comment will cost you a pair of golden geese. No, I will not be uh, saying anything else. Um, I forgot what to call the something star, gold, red star, gold, green, green. There's, I don't know. There are stars involved. Aren't there stars involved? Pretty sure there are stars involved. Like a red star, blue star, something like that. Actually, I'm a huge fan, Reese. I'm, I'm actually a really big fan of the, uh, of the golden geese. I just did that to see if you were around. It was just, you know what I mean? It's like, I know when you say stuff like, uh, well, you know, my uh, my cooter's probably uh, hanging out. It's just to see if I'm going to pop up and go, did someone just say cooter? Yeah, it's the same kind of thing. I was just throwing out the golden goose one. You think the, uh, the uh, where's the uh, the average everyday, uh, everyday guy like myself? Go for a little, uh, for a little action around here. Huh? Think that might do it? We come for your daughter, Chuck. Saw a pair of Scientology cartoon shoes the other day. Where do you get those? Scientology cartoon shoes. She did come out of the corner swinging a little bit. What's good for the geese is good for the Reese. Interesting. Kim is blue. It's not where I thought that was going, but uh, you were a Scientologist. You know more than, yeah, open mouth. Insert foot. See, she, I told you, she knows more than me. Uh, you will notice that is when I showed up on the Reese show. So both of us have this thing going. Like, she's probably actually doing something around her house. Uh, tragedy! When I can't come on, but I can't get down a tragedy! Uh, it is one of those situations where she's just doing stuff around the house and she's listening. And she's waiting to hear me say something like, I'm not a big fan of those golden geese, right? And I'm listening for the word cooter. Same kind of thing, right? Or uh, there are other things, other things I pop up on. Like I'll pop up if somebody says uh, any of those. What are golden geese? Damien, are you looking for a date? Uh, I think any woman who says what are golden geese should probably be dating. Um Zen Wen, I'm glad to uh, to hear that you're laughing. You know what? I really am. It's uh, you know what? It hasn't been a great day. It really hasn't. But um, I chased I, I chased a receipt. I didn't want to tell this story, but I'm going to tell it. I chased a receipt across a, a parking lot today. Right, all the way across the parking lot. I mean, way over a hundred yards, running as fast as I could. Now, keep in mind, I didn't drop this receipt. Right. Johnny Scoville dropped this receipt. I just chased after this receipt because I knew that if this receipt got across the, the road and it's so windy, you guys know how windy it is here. We were just talking about it. Johnny takes this thing out of his pocket and goes, whew, right, gone. Like Forrest Gump times 10. It's going up in the air and I just went, oh, started to run. You know what, Cinderella? Um, my uh, my brother said to me, as I'm, as I'm limping up to him, literally limping up like dying. And uh, my... Uh, yeah, see keywords. Yeah, my brother comes up and goes, "Oh man, I would have loved to have put the Benny Hill uh, music soundtrack to that." As I was running around, I'm like, "I'm not laughing at any of this, man." Do they carry a size 11? As he says, uh, "I'm sure they do. I'm sure they do." I think. What is the receipt uh, for? It was worth. It was for a computer that we were returning, and it was for a laptop. So it was, it was a very expensive uh, receipt. Yakety sax, is that what that's called? Thank you, John. Another guy would do this one. You'd slap the uh, old ball guy on the head. Yeah, that's a necessary receipt, Kristen Melinda. And if it gets by this one last curve, right? 
it's into a four lane highway. I'm never seeing this freaking thing again, right? It's not going to happen. So I busted my foot up bad. It was just, it was awful. And it reminded me, if that video magically shows up on Johnny's channel tomorrow, I'm, I'm magically lighting Johnny on fire. Yeah, I, everybody would have liked to have seen it. I mean, there's no doubt everyone would have liked to have seen it. Reese would have watched it. She would have enjoyed it. But it was just, and I, and the thing is, I had to look like the world's biggest bunghole chasing this thing around because it's going this way and this way and up and down. And, and at one point, I, I got a foot on it, right? But it was the foot, like I had to cross over and I knew when that foot moved, this thing was going to blow away, right? Yeah, that's an IOU. <laughs> <laughs> I could have gone. I could have gone into the store with that, Reese. Uh, yeah. Well, sir, do you have the receipt? I don't. No, I don't. But uh, check this out. This is as good as a receipt. See that? It's an IOU. So it's OU for a computer. I want to hold on to that one. Um. Yeah, it's probably a little better than an Al Anon meeting, especially if you've had a couple of beers. This is this is definitely better than an Al Anon meeting. Um. I like women. I mean, Benny Hill. Yeah, Rick, I get it. Uh, my parents used to come home, right? I, I swear to God, they would go out on Saturday nights, right? That was Benny Hill night. But they would come in as that show started. I mean, we would look at the clock and you knew they never missed a beat. You know why? Because they didn't want me to see any boobs. And uh, Benny Hill would always, you'd be watching on regular TV and the next thing you know, there'd be a breast, right? Fully uh, unsheathed in all of its glory. And when you're about 14, like that doesn't happen really often. That, that would pop up on the TV. You'd go, holy hell, that was a boob. No, I saw it. You couldn't rewind it or do anything like that. But uh, And the fact is, once you saw that the first time, you stayed up to watch Benny Hill every single uh, time for the rest of your life. You watched so much Irish shows talking with Full of Hope, you started picking up her accent. That's funny. Benny Hill was on right after Monty Python Flying Circus. Oh, yeah, that's a, there's a, a headliner right there. How is it in Tucson? It's windy, Brianna. So that's what I was just talking about. I was chasing this damn receipt. Um, and as I said, I chased it 700 yards. Like this was at least seven football fields. And by the time this show's over, it could be 15 football fields. Because the more I think about it, the more I realize it was a really long run. It took like 25 minutes to get this receipt. It was pretty ugly. You know, it was pretty damn ugly. Yes, you will love it when the subject of lesser known 70s hits comes up, right? Um, we, do some, uh, we do some silly uh, stuff here. I agree with you. Benny Hill is definitely watched on other planets. Yep. Absolutely. <laughs> May I buy an N, please, half? Mark Hardman, how are you? Good to see you, Mark Hardman. You found the children of alcoholics the most depressing group? I don't know. I've been to, I've been to a lot of uh, pretty depressing groups, but um, no. Yeah, you know, Catalina, I could have contacted the credit card company, but as I was watching this piece of paper go up into the air, I literally was thinking to myself, this is going to extend this shite show that we've been working on with this computer for at least another day. I'm, I'm chasing this receipt. And if I get hit by an 18-wheeler in the process, I'm chasing this receipt. Now, it wasn't a smart move. Hindsight being 2020, I'm an old man. I'm not young. Uh, in fact, I can't even pretend I'm young anymore. This, this run, when it was over, I'm not joking. Like, I looked down at my phone. I didn't even know who to call, right? I texted Reese. I said, I'm old. And, of course, Reese is one of those loving, caring people that is just always there for you. And she came back with, yeah. You know, that, that's the response I got from Reese. I'm pretty sure what she said was, yeah, and... You know, something like that. It uh, it was it was kind and loving. Did I get it? Damn right I got it. If I didn't, I'd still be chasing it. Dumb and Dumber is fun. Elf is your favorite? I know. I'm just telling you, I know. 
the day is coming where I'm going to, I'm going to uh, hang out and, uh, and get to watch Dumb and Dumber with a couple of you, maybe on the, uh, maybe on the boat. I'm not old. Uh, I feel old. It might have been the 1,600 yards that I had to chase down this damn receipt uphill as the wind blew it away from me at a speed you would not believe. I'm telling you, the thing was going like 60 miles an hour away from me. I was running like Ben Johnson, right? Do the hur like hurdle stuff, right? I hopped a couple of cars. You cannot believe the speed at which I chased this thing across the parking lot. Myopic, right? Focused, laser focused, you know? It went that way, I went that way. It was... I'm sure I look like a jackass. It must have been something to watch. You know what, Jill? I would have claimed in the snow had I not been. Um, was Johnny infinitely grateful? He laughed at me, which... Um, wait a second. What do you mean I lie? That's exactly what... What did you say when I said I was old? I'm going to... You know what? I will show you the phone. Quibble. Oh, goodness. I'll well, put that up. That's no, not what you think. Oh, there we go. There we go. There we go. No, no, that's what she said. Okay, maybe that's not exactly what she said. That's not exactly what she said. I, uh, I, uh, yeah, I may have, uh, I may have misquoted her slightly, but that was the, that was the, um, that was the, uh, the, what do you call it? That was the tenor of the, uh, of the call. No, but uh, you do not sense a Reese appearance coming. I'm afraid of Reese. However, Reese will be here tomorrow night. Yeah, Deeming, here's the deal. Half of the time, the boob shot did turn out to be the old man's head. That's true. Half of the time, you thought you were looking at cleavage. It turned out to be the old man. But sometimes it really was. Hey, Debbie Logan, there's nothing wrong with rednecks, love. Nothing wrong with rednecks, right? I grew up in the, uh, I grew up in a really redneck town. Uh, yeah, I'm not going to show the, uh, that, did I show the text? Was that, was that ever angled that way? That wasn't angled that way. I'd already be in trouble. Right? I'd already be in trouble. All right, people, that's a wrap. Tomorrow night here on the lifeboat, I am going to be here with Quibble and we're going to do, uh, yeah, I'm going to, uh, I'm going to have Quibble on here tomorrow night and, uh, the two of us are going to be doing a call-in program. That's right. We are going to be doing a, you saw it all? Oh, Lord. If you saw it all, the show had already, we'd already be over. It wouldn't even be a, uh, it wouldn't even be a life boat. It would be over. It's pretty, pretty rugged stuff, but it's not me. It's her. <laughs> yeah. What, you think it's, uh, you think it's watch pictures? Not at all. Look at that. That is a princess. Is it not? Look at her, huh? And if you have not seen Squirrel licking her, uh, her hand in slow motion, on Johnny's channel, I'm telling you, that guy is using my cat. It's awful. She's working full time over there at Chase the Heat. You know, there's no living with him. It's uh, it's awful. No, Alan's not allowed to call in anymore, right? Alan, uh, Alan has got all the women. Uh, all uh, yeah, Alan's done. He's not. He, you know, he's he's not calling in anymore. We've uh, we're banning Alan. If Alan calls in, he has to do his best America imitation on the phone. Reese was outed once. That's how she got here. Yeah, but this would be way more fun. In fact, hold on. I'll just show you. Let's see what we got here. Actually, I probably could show that, but I'm not going to. And she did make a comment, something about I was uh, I was old. It wasn't it wasn't nearly as mean, but she did say you're old. But it wasn't uh, like a mean thing. It was a why are you doing stupid stuff like that? You're old kind of thing. I've been told it's easier to rehab. 
opiate users, but meth addicts are extremely difficult to help. Truth? No, not at all. Uh, no truth to that at all. What I will tell you is this, depending on how long a person has been using, if it's a 10-year user of opiates or a 10-year user of meth, I'd rather work with an opiate person. The reason being with meth, uh, you, if you've been doing meth that long, your body tends to stop making feel-good chemicals on its own. It, it won't release them unless you put meth into your body. And sometimes that can be really, really hard. Quibble, you are, uh, you are this close. You are that close. Walk the plank. Walk the plank. Right? Walking the plank. You're so close. So close. All right. On that note, people. Yeah, my dopamine gets dopamine. Alan uh, could probably do some ASMR stuff. I think that might be a good idea, actually. Yeah, getting off meth, coke, and uh, et cetera was easier for me than the opiates. In my experience, people complain more about getting off opiates than anything else. People that I know that have beat everything all complain most about opiates. The physical dependency on it is just so extreme. Ciao. Uh, and to the rest of you, please have a fantastic night. That goes even for you, Quibble. Tyrant. Midwestern goodbye syndrome. Well, okay, you dear. Good night, all. Nonsense. That doesn't mean you can. Quibble doesn't mean you can. If everyone else was jumping off.